Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Now, I did mention in the last video that Florida is going to be funding research into ivermectin and other repurposed drugs. So I've just put something briefly together on this. It shouldn't take too long, but for example, here's uh, the Florida Phoenix ivermectin from the capital to state funded cancer research. It's a thing in Florida. And then there's releases from the Ron DeSantis uh, administration and there's releases from uh, Florida Health as well and various other references that I've put in that you can uh, peruse at your leisure. Now, at the moment in the United States, as far as I can tell, Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana, Idaho and Texas, in all of those states, and please, if you live in those states and I'm wrong, do correct me. I believe that you can buy ivermectin over the counter in those states. Now, as far as I'm aware, fenbendazole is not authorised for human use anywhere in the States, but mubendazole and abendazole are. And Florida looks like it's soon going to be joining Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana, Idaho, Texas in buying over-the-counter ivermectin. So Florida's launched something called the uh, Florida Cancer Innovation Fund. And it's got new priority categories for research. And uh, these make a lot of sense. This year introduces dedicated funding categories for nutrition based cancer prevention research and generic drug repurposing. For example, ivermectin, reflecting Florida's leadership in comprehensive cancer prevention and accessible treatment innovation. So this is cancer research in Florida and it's going to be quite well funded. The funding so far I think is up to $140 million in total. Talking about novel treatments, and, and, and this should be a bit getting done everywhere. Florida, as far as I know, is the only administration in the world that's taking up this challenge of research. Novel treatments... Development and testing of novel cancer treatments, cost-effective generic drugs and supportive holistic therapies that can show measurable patient impact within the grant period, which is one year. And looking at your feedback, um, that won't be difficult to do at all. Some of you have had amazing benefits with these alternative treatments in a very short period of time. And um, ivermectin, for example, is known to be a remarkably safe drug as is mubendazole. Uh, projects must demonstrate immediate clinical uh, applicability uh, and potential for broad uh, adoption. Now, what Florida finds out, of course, the rest of us will be looking at with some interest. And, uh, well, I was going to say our governments will follow, but of course they probably won't because they are... There's various reasons why they probably won't. Um, but at least... Looks like Florida is going to be come up, coming up with pretty hard data applicable to the bedside and the preventative situation within a year, which is remarkably encouraging. Well done, state of Florida. Not so well done the United Kingdom or Australia or Canada or New Zealand or Ireland. Governor Wrong dissenters and the First Lady Casey dissenters. Now, now uh, the First Lady uh, dissenters, dissenters, um, I believe she did have breast cancer herself from memory in 2021. I'm delighted to say at the moment, as far as I know, uh, she's cancer free, but she has had experience with that in 2021. Announces 60 million funding opportunity for innovative cancer research on World Cancer Research Day. Uh, the release here says further priority will be given to projects that focus on nutrition and the repurposing of generic drugs such as ivermectin for cancer treatment. This is really good news. Uh, First Lady uh, Dissenters says this. I know we should look at it, talking about ivermectin. I know we should look at the benefits of it. We shouldn't just speculate and guess. And I agree completely. What's wrong with uh, the First Lady's uh, science there? Nothing at all. State Surgeon General Joseph, uh, Dr. Joseph A. Lapido, also uh, in agreement. There's been a lot of chatter about it. Uh, this is a very simple drug that happens to be very safe. 
the risk benefit analysis is so good if there's any if there's any benefit here this is what we need to find out definitively uh by the way has unfortunately you know it's so much it's been weighed down by all this politics sure there's been political influences especially during the biden administration first lady again this focus on nutrition research and preventative strategy directly aligns with the work of florida Mayha, make america healthy again commission and puts florida at the forefront of discovering how we can help beat a disease yeah because it's got an open mind there's open channels here for uh, application if you look on these uh, links i've given you there's various links to uh, right uh, funding uh, applications um and i suspect there's many people in florida well capable of writing excellent applications now the now the money's there because everyone's got to make a living of course to do this research the florida cancer innovation fund established through the casey de Santos research program seeks to accelerate breakthrough research enhancing treatment modalities and eliminating barriers to life-saving medical advances we need to eliminate barriers to potentially life-saving medical and advances and if we're wrong the research will show that we're wrong on the good side these drugs are unlikely to have well we know they're safe drugs obviously all drugs can have side effects um, but at the right doses <clears throat> it's likely to be less dangerous than chemotherapy for example shall we say which doesn't take much saying to tell you the truth nasty treatments uh, has provided 80 million dollars so far to 95 research organizations now another 60 million dollars uh, proper research can be done with this kind of uh, financing grants <coughs> grants supporting new monitoring technology <coughs> excuse me if i'm still getting over this book i had last week week before was it probably now grant supporting new monitoring technology for all the early disease detection of course the earlier cancer is detected the more likely it is to be treated why wouldn't you want data on that clinical trial expansion to rural areas which is good include inclusive um data-driven precision medical platforms data is going to be collected this is going to be quantitative data that's going to be collected here and applications will be based on or adjudication of applications will be based on scientific merit is this apple apple hood and mother pie this isn't it uh, innovation potential collaborative strength and ability to improve patients outcomes for all floridians and then by extension everyone in the world when we know more priority will be given to translational research that's just research that can be used fairly quickly sort of uh, bench to bedside type of thing used in the real world direct interventions with measurable outcomes i mean a lot of these interventions are being carried out already informally because people with cancer are desperate uh, again there could be a way of just quantifying this collecting the data prospectively as we go along uh, and projects serving rural and medically underserved areas throughout florida which of course is excellent collaborative projects that bring together oncologist researchers and cancer treatment centers to break down traditional silos i agree completely um you know you can get like one group of professionals there and one group of professionals there and there the twain shall meet we need to break those silos down um, and foster rapid advancements in cancer care on uh so that rapid in advancements in cancer care are prioritized excellent official <coughs> state level funding from florida don't know of it going on anywhere else and this means we can be getting real answers within a year once this data is paid for carried out published hopefully within a year maybe a little more to write up the uh, the papers academics can be slow in writing up papers um, and the peer review process we're going to get some definitive answers so that's all i want to say now but in, in the last video i did do um a lot of your um experiences with ivermectin and fenbendazole so i'm just going to give you one more and things that uh, treat cats and dogs of course i've got a good chance of chance of treating people as well or well, it's certainly worth bearing in mind uh, this is just from one account from uh, a viewer from the last video where we looked at the feedback from the last video uh, my 11 year old cat was diagnosed with, with cancer all through his body which had start, started in his mouth 
He also had visible tumours on his abdomen. He was diagnosed by two different vets, both of whom wanted to put him out of his misery. Right. Immediately. One of the vets said I could try chemo, but it would cost around 15000 with a very low success rate. I put him on fenbendazole paste, 300 micrograms, uh, once per day. I assume that's 300 micrograms per kilogram. The viewer doesn't say. The reason I'm not saying who these viewers are, they've put these in the public domain, so we're okay reading them out. Thank you for putting them in the public domain, everyone that's contributed. But I just don't feel it's right without explicit permission to put people's names in just for just for confidentiality and decency purposes. Um, but you can check, they are all in the feedback. I put him on fenbendazole paste, 300 micrograms once a day, three days on, four days off. So giving the fenbendazole for three days, then a four day rest. Uh, by the end of the first week, he was eating again, had stopped drooling and was walking around like his old self. After just three weeks, the vet declared him cancer free. And what are we to make of this? What are we to make of this? Cancer free after three weeks after being diagnosed and advising euthanasia. What are we to make of this? After just three weeks, the vet declared him cancer free. That was a year ago. This is incredible. If there's any validity to this, it's immoral not to research it. My cat is now fat and happy and in excellent health. I paid about 21 Australian dollars, 12 English pounds, for each syringe of edible paste to put on his food. Each syringe contained enough fenbendazole for three days of active treatment. Then he had four days, four day break <coughs> before starting again the next week. So what are we talking about here? $120 or something altogether? Um, biggest cost was having it shipped to Australia. Well, I'm pleased you could get it to Australia. Um, I bought it direct from a vet supply company. Uh, remember, I'm not telling you what to take for yourselves or indeed for your animals. I'm not a vet. Um, and uh, I'm certainly not your doctor. Um, in fact, I'm a nurse lecturer. Um, biggest cost was having it shipped to Australia. I bought it direct from a vet supplying company. They had also, well, I'm a retired nurse lecturer. <laughs> they, they had also ta uh, uh, tasteless fenbenders or granules, which could be sprinkled on food. Interesting. So they also had tasteless fenbenders or granules, which could be sprinkled on food. I imagine this would be a better option for humans. Oh, heck, I, I'm just reading that out. I'm not telling you what to do. Please don't do anything based because fenbenders is not authorised for humans. Remember, this is a veterinary comment. Uh, oh, I'm grateful and uh, amazed every day that my dear cat has fully recovered. He only took Fen Benders off for a total of four weeks, nothing else. The vet couldn't believe it. It's a miracle as far as I'm concerned. And I must say, I, I, I agree it appears to be. Given all these anecdotes that we've looked at, I consider it unethical for um, this not to be researched. Um, ivermectin, mabendazole, fenbendazole. Of course, we looked at turkey tail as well. The, the mushroom, we looked at that uh, recently and we saw a dog that was apparently cured and a human that was doing remarkably well after uh, turkey tail. There's also a herb I haven't looked into much called Artemisi Artemisius annuus, uh, which deserves to be looked at as well. But from the evidence we've looked at here, no question that these antiparasitics should be investigated for their anti-cancer properties, in my view. Let me know what you think. Um, if you live in the rest of the United States, or in Canada, or the United Kingdom, or France, or Germany, or Ireland, or New Zealand, and Australia, don't hold your breath, sadly. Well done, Florida. And uh, if you're interested in that research, uh, do put an application in if you're an academic watching this. Um, the money's there. And I'm sure will be effectively used. And I'm expecting hard data within a year. Which, God willing, we will look at at the time. But for now, as always, thank you for watching. God bless.